Good morning, bears. It's Saturday. Hello. Got some honey and some salmon. A little bit of honey for your salmon. Now let's see if the stream is working. We got an awesome show for ya. And by we, I mean me. Oh, it looks like it's working. Hello, everybody. This isn't the normal time, but since I uh, couldn't do a, a stream yesterday, I, th I figured I'd make up for it. Hey, love. Are you watching the stream? Is it is it uh, working at all? Thanks. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm streaming to YouTube again, but I'm still going to do Vimeo. Yo, what up? Hi, everybody. Oh, wow. YouTube is going crazy. This is awesome. This is really cool. All right, I'm going to explain buffering badly. Yeah, I figured that. It is? Awesome. Let me uh, lower the output a little bit here. I got nicotine stains on my fingers. I'll tell the story about how I got back. Glad to see you back here. Thanks, bud. Good morning, everybody. Wow, this is really cool to see. I'll tell you the YouTube story. I got some more stories. I'm still going to be streaming to my site, hugepianist.com, from Vimeo. Sticking with Vimeo, you can super chat me at paypal.me slash feedthebear. Because while I was gone from YouTube, I had to adapt, yo. And I did. And we also invented an app that we, I will uh, release to you guys on Monday. It's looking uh, very, very promising. But YouTube is still, uh, you know, we have so many subscribers here that I'm, uh, I, uh, I'm not going to not stream here out of spite. Oh, and how come soy is and everything? Oh, all right. Well, today I'm, I, I'll, I'll read what you guys have, um, what, what you guys write me and the bare phone has been activated. For a lot of you, uh, people that just know me here on YouTube, a lot's a lot's changed. Hang on, bad video settings. Please use a keyframe sequence four seconds or less. What the hell is this? All right, there's going to be a little. We got to fix some stuff here real quick. The current keyframe frequency is 8.3 seconds. I have no idea what any of that means, guys. Let me uh, let me try and fix some of this. Does it seem good? It's fine now. All right. Yeah, but it's doing that crazy thing it used to do, right? Please use a keyframe frequency. Uh, let me refresh this because right now it says my stream health is bad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've stream diabetes. Owen with Crowder. Well, what happened to Owen on Crowder? Oh, I just did a song for him. It was just a uh, silly song. Is it working? So a lot of you guys are saying it's good and some of you are saying it's bad. Ignore the keyframe comments, video and audio are great now. All right, sweet. And if for some reason it isn't working, uh, you can go to Vimeo or hugepianist.com or hugepianist.fun. We have a backup there. Yeah, while we were getting, uh, enjoyed you on CRTV. Oh yeah, I'm gonna talk about that. All right, I'm, not, I'm just gonna focus on, uh, on, on my game plan today. We're gonna talk about the history of public schools. We're going to talk about music and um, history and, of course, just my adventures in life. So, since I got banned from YouTube, I've been behind the scenes working with another guy who is uh, talking to them on my behalf to get back. I didn't want to say anything about it because I, I figured it wasn't going to work, but it did work. Because uh, my appeals came back saying that they stood behind... The, the 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 community strikes and I was up to two and I was about to get my third strike and be banned permanently so I just um I wasn't allowed to upload on YouTube and I just didn't really have too much hope for it and then my boy came through and he told me yesterday that both strikes have been removed and that we now have an, a much easier process to appeal to YouTube 
So that's awesome. Let me just check one more time to make sure it's still working. Is this real? Yes, it's real, Mike. Yeah, so we're uh, we're back. But at the same time, you know, Vimeo was working. And so I'm going to stick with them too because I like supporting businesses that uh, aren't heavy in the censorship. So this is still streaming from Vimeo and going to Twitch, which is uh, I'm Unbearable Comedy on Twitch and also... Uh, my website, hugepianist.com. And yeah, you can super chat me here or you can do um, paypal.me slash feed the bear. <coughs> Those go right into my email. But we have a lot to talk about. I am very excited. One way to get around censorship in the future, Amy was um, challenging me to be more clever about it. She's like, you're too smart to trigger the algorithms. Be funnier. And I was like, okay, that's why I married her. So like stuff like this, like see that? I hope you guys get the joke. You see the joke? You know what a, a bundle of sticks is called? Ha 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 You see, that's the future because it's also, it's even more of, um, of an F you to the censorship police when you can say exactly the same thing and just nothing happens. Because today we got, some, we got some, some heavy duty stuff to talk about. What is this? Oh, like for example, this. This is now a completely viral meme. Like just from, I'm glad that this uh, Instagram account gave me credit, but it's this is getting passed everywhere. When you realize most adults in the world uh, still read this symbol as a pound and you named your women's movement against sexual assault, pound me too. Okay, so that's that's the thing. That's the joke that I've been doing a while now. And what Patreon wrote me a formal letter telling me that one more incident and I will be kicked off Patreon. They've since backed off. If you guys want to be Patreons, patreon.com slash WDTL. But that was the joke. They said that I was uh, mocking the victims of sexual harassment. And now it's so viral that I got the last laugh on that one because this is what I did on stage. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure I... uh, I worded it significantly better. All right, let me, um, did I download this? I got nicotine stains on my fingers. All right, let me add it to my OBS. But by the way, this school system stuff, because me and Amy are definitely thinking about homeschooling Wally, at least when he's uh, young. Man, the history of public schools is, is wild. All right, so this is me doing the joke. If anybody... Because now other comedians have just started doing this joke on stage two. I've been doing it so much longer and I've gotten in so much quote unquote trouble for doing this joke. And so many of these same stupid comedians, these women too, some of them, um, have said that this is offensive to victims of sexual assault, are now doing the joke. Here it is. Like, same with feminism. Like, I'm trying to get on board feminism. Like, I have feminist friends that talk feminism. I'm, I'm like, yo, I'm all about you guys. And I'm like, I just don't quite understand the pound me too movement. <laughs> and they're like, you mean hashtag? I'm like, I'm 37, you mean pound sign? <laughs> and I'm seeing all these horny celebrities everywhere. They're like, enough's enough, pound me too. And I'm like, Jesus lady, have some tact. So that was a joke that launched a thousand ships against me. And of course, the other one was the David Hogg joke that I said, uh, you know, until you get pubes, you can't tell grown men not to use guns. That got me permanently banned from Twitter, which is hilarious, seeing as this is, uh, where is it? This made me laugh. So CRTV, I was on Gavin McGinnis' show yesterday, and they were they were tweeting out the guests. I was the special guest, not not roundtable garbage. And it had all their Twitter handles, and it just says uh, at user banned from Twitter is mine. I thought that was hilarious. And uh, now more and more is coming out about the Parkland shooting. So this whole gun ban thing is going to, for anybody that actually cares about kids' safety or the future of America or truth in any way. 
when you study what really happened in Parkland and what broke down, it's much, it's, it's, it's very comparable to the Hurricane Katrina catastrophe in New Orleans and how the, the corruption in the government with the levees and stuff uh, created just uh, this massive problem. I knew that something was up, how much people would react to me making fun of David Hogg. No one cares. Like, literally no one cares about a pube joke. And, um, oh, I made one with uh, McGinnis. So, I uploaded, I uploaded this yesterday. And people started uh, making memes out of it, which was pretty funny. Someone made this one. Trudeau is a tolerant man. Where you just put in whatever is in the quote thing. But so anyway... Stefan Molyneux, who I, I was just on his show this week, so much love to that dude, and check out uh, that appearance. My mom loved it. My mom was uh, very moved by it, which is a which is a cool thing because she's very Germanic, Scandinavian, so she's not uh, moved by by much. <laughs> but uh, he he just uploaded a a complete breakdown of the Parkland situation yesterday. And I highly recommend you listen to it. It's not, it's all public knowledge. All this stuff that's now coming out is public knowledge. Like, let me just break down a little of this and then we'll get more into schooling and funny stuff. Um, so uh, Parkland had a, a real, like a crime situation going on. And this is the notion that is not politically correct, but is um, causing a lot of problems. That is that any disparity between races of kids being in trouble in any way or committing crimes or whatever is caused by white racial prejudice. So if you're basing your policies off that false thing, then everything's going to go to hell, which we saw what happened. So they, they, they started saying the student to prison pipeline thing and all this rhetoric. And, and so Obama started this thing called um, uh, Race to the Top which is pretty gross because it's a pun on race. And just thinking about children's races is, is just very eugenic to me and very gross. And we'll get into that more about the public school system. It's almost like, it's almost getting to the point where if you're not racist, like I think I'm so not racist that this the leftist race obsession is getting so tedious and and just dangerous. So... So they said that getting arrested decreases the chances of these kids getting a job later in life. You want to know what else it decreases the chances of? Being able to buy a gun. Okay. <laughs> so they said that any non-white students, students with disabilities, or LGBT students, and God only knows what that means. I don't know why you're focusing on what, who kids are sexually attracted to. Is, in, is so insane. And the fact that my David Hogg joke was perceived as sexualizing a boy is mind-blowing given that there's now student policy about who is L, G, or B, or T. Like, can you imagine thinking about whether or not a 13-year-old is bi? Ugh. Anyway, so these kids, uh, the whole thing is they have to lower those numbers. <clears throat> of um of arrests and so they started something called the promise program where that means the cops wouldn't be involved in um larceny under a certain amount of money uh vandalism under a thousand dollars certain types of violence like stuff that you should call the cops on they wouldn't so blacks and hispanic kids no longer had to obey certain laws and this is all public knowledge so what happens the gangs start using those kids <clears throat> oops so the numbers dropped, right? So it went from 1,056 in 2010 or 11 or something. And then after Obama's policies by 15, it went down. It was already down to 392. But it's just changing the numbers. Like the crimes weren't going down. It was just the enforcement of the crimes did. So it was known as this really safe school system, but it wasn't safe at all. And the, and the school system got $54 million from the federal government because of this. So basically, the taxpayers are paying the cops money to protect them. And then the taxpayers are then paying the school to not protect their kids. And so the school's getting rich. The cops are getting rich. The, the, the chief there drives a Lamborghini. That idiot. And uh, 
And yeah, no one's, it's just a, a scam. <clears throat> and so the kids just aren't safe. So they said that Nicholas Cruz wasn't in the Promise program. That's what, when David Hogg was rollerblading everywhere and, and everything was happening. The whole thing was that David, or that Nicholas Cruz was not in the Promise program. Turns out, of course, he was. And because uh, he was autistic, his last name was Cruz. And um, he, he had committed just many, many acts of violence. And the only way they even found that out was the Sun Sentinel discovered it and then called him out on it. And so, yeah, he was. Um, and then the police, the police chief, they said that they called the cops on him 33 times. And of course, the police chief said that that was, quote unquote, fake news. And that it was only like 24, 25 times. Turns out it was 41 times. And it was for like beating the elderly and torturing cats. And he kept saying he wanted a gun. And legally, he wouldn't have been able to get a gun if they had called the cops on the crimes that he had committed. And um, he even told this, he even called in that he was going to shoot up the school. And no one did anything because they were all getting paid. So yeah, I'm going to be making fun of David Hogg because he's a profiteer on the deaths of kids. Uh, anyway, that got me obsessing about, oh, and someone on the chat a second ago asked me about, about, uh, my appearance on Crowder. I, you didn't see me. I was, I made this thing every day. These comedians just want to make you smile to keep, keep the lights on for Sven computer. He's a robot for God's sake. I will euthanize them if you don't contribute to I just thought it was funny. But because every now and then we'll we'll be doing a writing session and I'll just think of like a funny mug mug club commercial or something and um I just made that for him. So someone asked me that, that's the answer. So I started obsessing about about um public schools because I don't want to send my kid to a public school and I can't exactly afford private schools. You know, maybe one day I can, maybe, maybe a certain type of private school I could, but, um, you know, these $30,000 a year schools for kids are, are just for the rich. And, uh, I think public schools aren't safe because I think the shootings will continue to get worse if we don't acknowledge the, the problems, which is when kids commit crimes, you have to, uh, make sure that, that they aren't in the, the gen pop. Also, young boys have a lot of energy and they're, and they're now being called this whole concept of toxic masculinity results from the fact that a lot of young boys just want to break and take apart and run and scream and uh, wrestle and play rough and figure out life. And uh, that is really bad behavior in an institution aimed at forced compliance. So you either change the system and the money or you uh, say that being male is bad. And I have a boy and I'm about to have a second boy and I do not find being a boy bad at all. In fact, um, I think it's pretty damn sweet. I don't have to sit down when I pee. I can pee on anything. I can write my name in snow or sand or I can pee on my buddy, you know, like if I'm peeing at a urinal, I can just move my wiener and just pee all over my friend. And uh, that's a lot more fun than people want to give it credit for. So I started reading this book. It's called uh, Dumbing Us Down, The Hidden Curriculum of Compulsory Schools by John Taylor Gatto. And this dude was like New York State Teacher of the Year several times. He was an Ivy League guy. He was in the Army, born in 1935. He's basically like the Thomas Sowell of um, teaching. Just an absolute legend. And the book, it, it, haunt, it haunted me. Because I had a very, very, very hard time in school. Because my parents gave me the sense of freedom and how to learn myself. Uh, any anything I wanted to do, they would encourage. And that's not spoiling your kid. Spoiling your kid is not giving them boundaries. What my parents did is if I wanted to weave cloth, which was I went through a cloth weaving phase. So I, I learned how to weave cloth. You know, I learned pottery. I, uh, you know, whatever I wanted to get into archery, I started making my own bows and arrows when I was like seven. Because that's kind of the deal that that human beings aren't the same at all. We're not the same. It's our, our success or lack of success is not because of oppression or racism or sexism, but we all are capable of greatness. It just has to be what it actually is. You can't just force people into this mold. Like I'm my, like I'm an artist. I'm 
good at putting random things together that other people wouldn't see fit. Like my pound me too joke. The reason I was nine months ahead of schedule on that baby was um, just just putting things together that other people weren't putting together, you know? And um, and that is a ter- that's a horrible quality to have in public school because it's all about compliance. And I never complied, ever. I was always... I was always in trouble, not the Nicholas Cruz type of trouble where he was um, screaming that he was going to kill people with a gun. I was just, if they said to walk a certain direction, class to class to class, I would just go the other direction. And just to show that, that, that I wasn't going to just do what they said when it didn't make any sense. And so that led to a lot of emotional scarring <laughs> that I think I still have to this day where I have a bit of a temper. I, um, I'm, I'm horrible with... Uh, false authority. You know, if I don't feel someone's earned authority over me, I don't give it to them, even at my own horrific detriment that you've seen. It's, it's, it's not detriment because I stay free, but I'm not just going to comply. And let's be honest, you guys have witnessed that for this last year pretty, pretty intensely, but I'm still free, but I'm not going to kneel. And they hate that shit. Why does it say Clinton? Oh, that's pretty funny. I'll play that in a second. Oh, before I dive, because I'm about to start really diving deep. Let's, uh, I'm going to show you the very beginning of uh, Eric Nimmer's special that that we're going to sell uh, pretty soon here. Check this out. <laughs> coming out here real quick to say hi and i'm gonna introduce a, a friend of mine because we're gonna do some taping tonight I- all right so that's the very very beginning so yeah it's the first special that wasn't my own that i got to produce and the, uh the budget was tight but we made it work and the crowd was amazing and pittsburgh just came out hard and and it, that was over some real big obstacles and nimmer just absolutely destroyed and we'll sell it for five bucks uh probably from his website And then eventually I'll just put it on mine too because I want to make it um, like a collection that anyone can get. But yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'm really proud of it. And um, yeah, let's keep talking about public schools. So, So here's the thing. I started looking back at other books that I've read. One is called Influence, Science and Practice by... um, Cialdini, I can't remember how to pronounce his name. He he was a professor at Arizona State who started this whole art slash science slash whatever field of thought about persuasion. There's another great book out called Persuasion, A Revolutionary Way to Influence and Persuade, also by the same author. And I think certain people will read these books to try and learn how to persuade. I read these books to learn how to not be tricked. And uh, it's very effective to learn how to not be tricked because I have no interest in manipulating people. I, uh, I think that it can, you can gain short term, but long term, you don't gain at all. You, you can like, here's one like uh, reciprocity. It's a good business move. I'm not judging any business guys to do it, but in my field, in like the art world, I find it a little weird, but um, to my own detriment possibly, but like, okay, so let's say you send someone a Christmas card like a client, a Christmas card, and you write down when their birthday was. And so you make sure that you say like, um, happy birthday, when's their birthday or Christmas. And you write something personal, like how's Debbie? See, to me that, that I, I can't do shit like that. I, sometimes I pretend I know less, not really pretend, but I'm like, I just don't want to be that guy. Because what happens is people become incapable of not um, giving something back to you reciprocity. That's why like, um, guys that are interested in a girl at a bar will like buy them a drink because that will open the door. That's persuasion. You know, if you're going into, um, cause the human instinct is to then give something back. Like if you're going into a job interview, they will uh, make you wait in a waiting room and then they'll offer you water or tea or coffee. You ever notice that they do it every time and it's both hospitable and it's also persuasion. It's uh, it's setting, it's it's kind of chum in the water for 
um, a hierarchy where if you say, you know, I've had some pretty high level, intense battle type meetings in my career and I never will take coffee or water when I'm waiting. Sometimes I don't even sit because all those things are part of the animal kingdom where if you sit and wait for another man, then you are now subservient to him on a weird instinctive level, even if you're not, even if you don't realize it. Now, most meetings, most friendships, most anything, I would sit all day. I don't care. I'll take all your coffee and water. But when it's someone I know is trying to do that to me to get some sort of advantage, I just don't comply to it. You know, I know some people that when they go through TSA, they always do the pat down because they refuse to do this in the metal thing. I always do it the thing in the metal thing because I'm uh, typically late to the airport and I just want to get through and I really don't care that much. But there's a million things like that that, uh, <clears throat> that people know of how to manipulate. And so the, 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 the school system is that on a massive scale where it's how do you create compliance? You know, the bell, like having students react to a bell, you know, having students seek approval from uh, non-experts, uh, bombarding them with information, like random chaos without giving them the, the tools as, uh, to put the information together or to form their own thoughts. It's just, you know, uh, Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. Like the fact that we know the names of the ships is crazy. And we don't know how to balance a checkbook or what the Fed does or how to not get fat or like how to, to, to have a healthy marriage. None of those things are, are taught in school. That's why I've become a lot closer over the years with uh, a lot of Christians and a lot of uh, conservative Jews because they would have outside education outside of the school that, that would teach them things that were actually extremely valuable in life because they weren't motivated by the interests of uh, the state and the controlling elite. And it gets really wild, man. So, and this isn't, this isn't like, oh, let me play you a funny joke real quick. Just so, just so it isn't wicked intense the whole time. Yeah. Where's the, uh, Oh, someone sent me this. This is funny. This is from England. Please note that the Worcestershire Magistrate Court is no longer a remand court. The remand court for Worcestershire is now Kidderminster. If you hand yourself in at Worcestershire Police Station after 6 a.m. for a court warrant, you will have to wait in police detention until the following morning. Sorry. The best time to hand yourself in at Worcestershire is between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. to enable transport um, arrangements to be made to Kidderminster. They're literally, they're literally telling criminals that they should, like, for the convenience of the cops to only hand themselves in at certain hours or else it'll be very inconvenient. It's just, that's just pretty hilarious. All right, so I made this one when I was just in D.C. Uh, doing Gavin McGinnis' CRTV show. I just thought it was pretty funny. All right, how do I get to it? Hope you guys are enjoying yourself. Oh, and I'm going to start reading the stuff that you sent me at uh, paypal.me slash feed the bear. And I will uh, read it. My favorite thing to do when I'm in uh, Washington, D.C. is go up to strangers and pretend I'm from another country and just go, Hello, uh, where did Seth Rich get murdered by Hillary Clinton? I just want to see this. Oh, I guess I didn't get the rest of it. All right. Let me check in and see if the streams are still working. Streams are working. I'll read these super chats real quick. Oh, wow. I got a lot of super chats. Yeah, super chats, I think, at this point, are a lot of them are going to be more like tips. Uh, but I'll, I'll try and get to them. Because I also have a lot of these uh, feedthebear.me slash... I mean, paypal.me slash feedthebear. I got to stay loyal to people who loyal to me. Um, glad to see you back. Checking in. Hey, guys. Oh, I'm glad to be back. <clears throat> Uh, what do we got here? Super happy you're back on YouTube. Love you. I'll kind of be Adam Stubble Bear. Welcome, Stubble Bear. Good morning, Big Bear. Good morning. How's the how's the Bear Blend Coffee treating you? Yo, I've, I've, I've uh, plugged it on here a bunch of times. Dude, it's been awesome. I'm, I think I might be drinking it right now. Nothing better than coffee and the bears. Oh, my God. It really is. 
heaven. Homeschool Big Bear. I did it through son's high school years. Time spent with him, values he learned is, oh, I'm 100% homeschooling. And, uh, you know, Amy's nervous that she's not going to be a good enough teacher, but I think she's going to be amazing. And I think I want to get involved too. Is there a university for bears? I could teach meteorology. Ba bears need to share knowledge is how to fish and acquire other meats. We also need to share knowledge in arguing socialists. We'll get to that. Yeah, I think we should have a bear university. God bless Lochran Bear. Thank oh, dude, you're the dude, this is amazing. Hey, buddy, great to see you back. It's been a shitty couple months without the live stream. Crowder bit was awesome the other night. Here's $10 penis. Oh, look at that $10 penis. Welcome back, Owen, uh, fellow 67 Giant. This year's been rough, but your streams have really helped me navigate the void. Thank you so much. As a side note, can I be verified as Dick Bear? Welcome, Dick Bear. Wow, you guys are getting me jacked up right now. And uh, if you want to just listen to the audio, Bayonet Bob runs all my podcast stuff legendarily. I'm on um, iTunes or Stitcher or a bunch of stuff, Podcast Bean or something Bean. It's uh, Why Didn't They Laugh? I, I, I put all these audio up there every day. It's super epic that you passed 100,000 subs and kept getting subs after getting banned from Twitter and live streaming. Happy this group exists. Oh, it's it's they're so loyal and so great. And um, if you stay true to yourself, authenticity is in short supply these days. And uh, I think that it's, it's very hopeful, our future. Seeing what I see every day and, and getting the messages I get. And it's just unbelievable. So... I'm still homeschooling now. Hey, Owen, I haven't been able to donate for a while, but I just want to thank you for being a voice of sanity in a wayward world. Oh, I love you. I love you, Baristotle. Hey, Big Bear. It's Curtis. Check Bear phone for Vancouver show. I need your input. I will. I have been so... For those of you that, that haven't been around in a while, I um, lost my book deal, which was expected. I saw it coming a while ago because I handed in a draft and, and the notes were so... You know, the notes before were always, this chapter's great, this chapter's great. And then once my... You know, my, my controversies kept happening. I, I, kept, I, I would get, you would get unlimited notes, basically. And I knew it was just done. So, and they'd already paid me $20,000 a while ago, two years ago. And so um, they just asked for it back. So I just paid it back to them, which, which definitely hurt pretty bad. But we had it, fortunately, because of, um, you can make a living without the state and without big institutions and without um, ad money. So thank you all for, for supporting and being here. All right. Yeah, I'm going to read a couple of these um, PayPal's that, that I got sent in before. Because I, I, I don't want to miss them. I really just want people to be happy. Literature Bear here. I mentioned in my first message that my bear name is a pun on the British smell, spelling on literature, which I had read a few months ago has an extra A in the word. Turns out this is not true. As is characteristic of me, I decided to double check again after I sent the message. I couldn't edit and I couldn't find the source where I read the spelling. Interesting. I'm glad you uh, brought that to my attention. However, as I struggle with pride and not wanting to look like an idiot in front of people, I respect silly mistakes like that bother me more than they should. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to be more able to laugh at herself so that when she looks like an ass, she doesn't actually become one? Uh, sure. I'll just give you an example right now. Oh, I don't have the flask on me. Thanks for everyone who bought the last flask. The socialism always ends in starvation and genocide. They sold out quick. We have a, a final flask design coming in soon, but I said socialism always end in starvation and genocide. I didn't even put the S on it. So I tried to make it funny where I'm like, now you know it's from me because it's spelled horribly. The, these things happen all the time. I think you. this is the thing is you put pressure on yourself, which is a good thing because you can motivate yourself with that. But at the same time, every one of us makes mistakes and um, good friends and good people will make fun of you for it, but they won't judge you for it. They won't think you're a bad person or anything. Like mistakes are what, make us, are what makes us special in a lot of ways. You know, a third of the top CEOs, the top 500 CEOs in America, a third of them are dyslexic. You know, the dude who pretty much wrote the code for the entire internet has Asperger's syndrome. Bill Gates has Asperger's syndrome. I'm a wordsmith comedian um, articulator of thoughts who can't spell restaurant well. Like, I don't know where the U goes. Like the little red underline thing when I'm texting says um, no suggestions a lot. 
And it's weird when robots, like like robots designed to give you suggestions, find you a lost cause. So um, you're being too hard on yourself. Women do that a lot, though. You guys have a lot more anxiety than men do. I think it's because women are so like uh, shitty to each other, and you're so used to like uh, women. Like a female group is so used to the, all the backhanded compliments and like, oh, are you okay? Are you doing okay? Or like, uh, if, if you suddenly get like healthy and more attractive, like a lot of your friends are like start rumors that you have herpes and shit, you know, but to your face, it's like, oh my God, you look so great. How do you even afford those pants, man? It's, it must be awesome having a dad so wealthy, right, Tina? Like that shit doesn't happen in male groups. Men will just be like, hey, it just isn't like that. And so women develop this anxiety that they're always, um, that people are judging them when they're really not. Like men don't really think that way. Like you'll never see men do that. Like men will talk shit to your face and when you're not around, they'll say how awesome you are. Women will say how awesome you are to your face and talk shit when you're not around. Of course, there's exceptions. Life is a series of exceptions, but unless we can, um, you know, call a spade a spade, then. All right. Someone else wrote, I love that book, dude. Girls dig a guy that talks about his feelings. Consider uh, it's super romantic to me. Consider this my pre-order. Let me, everyone know as soon as we order it, but I'll totally pay full price. This is just to encourage you. I'm sure this will all turn out for the better for you. Give the mom an extra kiss. You're the best. And uh, yeah, it does encourage me. I'm, I'm really, yeah, the last couple streams, for those of you that haven't been uh, up to date since I got banned from YouTube, um, I've been reading some of the chapters and people seem to really like them and I've gotten some really good response and a lot of people have wrote in that they uh, even edit them, like help me edit them. So it's pretty great. Um, this is a longer one and I really want to get to the public school stuff, but the fact that you guys will super chat me, I really want to honor it. And this person wants to be verified. I want to be verified as Elisha Bear because I love this story in the Old Testament where Elisha calls out two bears that attack the gang of teenagers who are mocking him. I think this story was included in the Bible so that we would know God, uh, God's opinion is of when teenagers mock adults by thinking they know better that they're elders about the in, uh, difference between right and wrong. It reminds me of David Hogg and his fellow brats. Anyway, I was watching you on CRTV tonight and I realized that each time you've had social media really feel threatened by you, it's been when you tweeted about puberty. First when the puberty blocker for toddler and next with Hogg's pubes. I think the Silicon Valley crowd must have some deep-seated insecurity about going back to their junior high days. Anyway, that's, that's a fucking great insight. Just stay away from the puberty talk and I think you'll be fine. Keep up the good work. See, that's not my, the, thank you, by the way, but my brain is like, if that's what, what they have a problem with, that's what I must continue. It's you get the most flack when you're over a target. And, uh, and I, the, the thumbnail for this on Vimeo is that one tweet that I, re, I talked about it with Gavin yesterday. By the way, Gavin McGinnis is hysterically funny. I drank with him the night before. We, had, we went out and had beers. And man, that guy's a genuinely fun dude. Like real fun. Like when I was first getting into uh, DC, I got there the night before so that I could wake up and do a show. And I was like, what are you up to tonight? And he was like, he was like, I'm going out with some of the other guests. Uh, see you tomorrow. And uh, I, I thought he was joking, but I, it was like, I, didn't, I wasn't totally sure. So, oh, the last girl with anxiety. Here's, here's a perfect example of uh, how to get around anxiety. Just make a joke out of it. So I'm like, Really? Because if you guys are having beers and high-fiving, like, I want in. Come on. And he's like, no, I'm just trying to get to know my guests a little better, but uh, I'll see you tomorrow, man. I'm excited. And it was, it was genius. And I was like, I was like, dude, don't put me on this B-squad, bro. And then he laughed, and then he's like, yeah, when do you want to meet up? And then, uh, and then he kept talking shit. We had some big laughs. I think I'm doing Australia with him. I think uh, me and him are going to do a tour in Australia, possibly with, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say any of this shit. I don't know. But I think we're doing an Australian tour. So that'd be great. What do we got here? I'm a silent bear. Usually listen with iTunes, but I had to chime in for the lone reason of convincing you not to buy a new keyboard. Your, um, your G-listness is hilarious. Yeah, that's because uh, I can't, I have no G on my keyboard. 
Glad to have you as part of my conservative network with Crowder, Shapiro, Knowles, Clavin. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate you. And um, yeah, let me get back to talking about some stuff. Let me dive in. Let me dive deep. And the, and the thing is, the reason I, one of the reasons I like to be uh, pretty open about my life on here is because it allows young people that are taught that you have to comply to idiots that you don't. Like you can, um, like I, I just had so many obstacles thrown at me professionally and we got through all of them systematically. And people were like, oh, you bitch a lot on social media. It's like, no, I just tell the story so that people will see that I got the YouTube back. Twitter doesn't matter. While I was off YouTube, I developed an app, um, unbearablenewsnetwork.com, produced a special. I figured out how to still do uh, Super Chats and we... Uh, toured successfully without stopping. And and like we had literally like tens of thousands of people against us that couldn't do anything. And, um, and it's important for young people to see that process and to see that your life is not going to be easy and struggle is good and it's necessary. And um, hey, love, yeah. can I have some more coffee? Yeah, coffee? Thanks, baby. She's awesome. All right, uh, so a couple more Super Chats came in. Hey, Owen, Nathan here, and I'm wondering if I can be verified, it's verified, as Huckleberry Bear. Thought about Huckleberry, but Googled it and found it meant a bear addicted to berries, like cocaine. That's hysterical. I'm just curious about how the bear phone works. I signed up for um, 20 bucks a month, and would like to know if I need to email you or wait for an email. Yeah, Amy always sends them out once a week. I've been um, backed up on my bear phone responses, but... Um, yeah, of course you can have bare phone access. Bare phone is something else for those of you that, that need updating. So I've, I kept getting shut down. Like even Patreon was about to shut me shut me down until a lot of the bears wrote in to the guy. And I and I, I put that thing on YouTube as well, just showing how much of a hypocrite he is. And so then they backed off. But at any point, I know they can pull Patreon from me. So I tried to migrate everyone over to my website if they want to support monthly. And I also got a bare phone, which is a phone number dedicated just to you guys. And uh, because I know that if, if Verizon tries to shut me down, we'll have, there will be, there, th that means that we will be in a civil war. <laughs> I get YouTube and Silicon Valley and stuff like that are, uh, you know, chugging soy and they have no, no dicks or balls anymore. But Verizon, AT&T, these are major American institutions that there's no, if, if they say that because of hate speech, I can't have a phone number. But um, it's kind of hard to text back a bunch of people. But Delev recently sent me something I can put on my computer where I can type responses. You may not be getting any G's because my keyboard does not have a G. But, yeah. All right. Thanks, Nathan. We'll, we'll figure it out. Mallory, you rock, dude. Keep up the great work. I would love to see you partner up with CRTV. Yeah, I talk to CRTV all the time. Uh, but PragerU has uh, offered me a... Um, a once a week type show. And I just did two videos for them and I'm about to make my first video for them today. I've been uh, working on it for the last couple of weeks. It's gonna be all about love and relationships and family. It's gonna be called Why Did They Laugh versus Why Didn't They Laugh where I take a truth that I've learned since I've been doing comedy. Thanks, love. And um, say hi. Wanna say hi to the peeps? Hey, look, it's Amherst. <laughs> look at this baby. Look at that. Yeah. Look at this. What up? Third trimester. I made that with my penis. All right, thanks, babe. What time is a uh, dog training thing? One. One? All right, sweet. So, um, I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's called Why Did They Laugh? Or my first episode is going to be about the soap opera eyes. And then the, like that joke I've done. And I've done it in so many countries and so many cities and so many demographics that I know it's true. And so I'm going to analyze why it's true and what people can learn from it. And it's going to be clean. I'm looking forward to doing that. But I think down the road, I'd really like to do something like what Gavin or Crowder does. Not on their level, necessarily, but um, just like a show, you know, just like a normal show. But I do, all right, Erica, I would like to be verified as Beach Bear. Welcome, Beach Bear. Florida show. We're still working on Florida shows. And Atlanta. Nimmer just sent me uh, this great looking theater in Atlanta. I, I could have done this one uh, this one place July 5th 
But that's too close to 4th of July. Because here's the thing. We now have a clause in the contract where they can't cancel on me. And so um, some, some places are accepting of that, but a lot aren't. And uh, I won't book myself ever again at a place that can just cancel me like they did in that last tour I just did. You know, Chicago, New York, Minneapolis, all these places, these, these art places uh, canceled me. And I know it caused a lot of, a lot of um, unnecessary stress to my people that just want to come out and have a good time. So I'm, I'm going to try hard to not expose you guys to that in the future. And I'm also excited about doing the Freedom Convention in Omaha with uh, Ron Paul and a bunch of other great dudes. Yeah. All right. I'm electrical sales and get to see several families a day. The west side of the uh, gunshine state is overwhelmingly liberty loving. Nice. And stand for goodness and common sense. Although sense for the left is hardly common. By the way, I'd like to share some interesting World War II information with you. My grandfather was a, a POW in a German concentration camp. Although I may have missed you sending the bear phone number, please resend. Keep on trucking, brother. Sipping Kofefe out of my edition one bear stein. Oh, dude, how great is that that there's two editions now of bear steins? I'm, I gotta get more bear steins. I'd love to chat World War II with you, bud. Like, that stuff is the greatest. I just called it a woman, bud. Sorry about that. I do that occasionally. But yeah, we'll send out the new uh, the bear phone details to the new peeps. All right, let's talk about school. Let's talk about school. Let's talk about school. Oh, this this caption I put on uh, Instagram was uh, me and McGinnis trying to uh, trying to recover simpler times, to relive simpler times when men wore sweaty suits and looked like oh he he said we looked like uh, Czechoslovakian hitmen when men just wore suits looking like Czechoslovakian hitmen and drank warm liquor, actual liquor, out of heavy glasses and laughed and mocked each other and there was no women or weak men around to be buzzkills because they weren't allowed because men were men and we were Czechoslovakian hitmen with kind of gay looking ties. I can't believe we both wore the same color tie. I thought there was no way anyone was going to wear the same color tie as mine. But uh, apparently McWenus did. All right. So let's talk schools. Where do we start? I wrote all these notes. I, I, wa I wanted to call this episode Permanent Dependency. So I'm reading this book. Let me plug it again. Dumbing Us Down by John Taylor Gatto. And Gatto is just the... Le he's, he's like... He reminds me so much of Thomas Sowell and his just legendary legendariness. Just, just no bullshit. Just, just this old, wise dude that we need around. And he made a point that I've made a lot in the past that I, I think is so important. And one of the reasons that we did pick Washington State to move to, we originally moved to Saranac Lake because my brother has young children that are Walter's age. And so we're planning on living here for good chunks of the summer and winter and living there for the rest of the year because she has three grandparents. Amy does. So that's great grandparents and grandparents and us. And... um and I think it's so important to have multi-generational communities for children. Because at this point, a good chunk of my life is just going to be my kids. And it, I'm not going to sacrifice mine and Amy's relationship for our kids. Because that's really important that you stay strong as a couple. Because it, it's better for them. I'm not going to sacrifice my work ethic or my art. Because that's also bad for the kids. You got to work hard. They, they, they don't do what you say. They do what you do type thing. But... The big choices in my life are going to be for the my kids. It's going to be um, for multi generational growth and love, and and I want to um, fix a lot of the things about my life that I don't have a time machine to fix. And one of the main things is uh, education. My parents gave me a great educational upbringing, and the public school gave me uh, it's it's just horrifying. Like there's been times when Amy's just like out of nowhere, just started rubbing my head and, and was just like, I'm really sorry for what happened to you. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm cool. But it's true. It's like, if you know all the stories, it's like they try to break creativity. And so it's kind of like when I first started listening to uh, 
Crowder, Shapiro, Dave Rubin, Jordan Peterson, Peterson, Thomas Sowell, um, Rogan, especially the guests that he would have on in a time when I was not hearing these these other points of view. Steph, uh, Malinu, you know, like when you just start um, Dave Smith, Dan Carlin, Hardcore History. When you start seeing other perspectives, it felt like music in my ears because there was so much cognitive dissonance that people kept contradicting themselves and they weren't making any sense to me and it was making me very frustrated. And I made this um, point on a previous live stream that a lot of people wrote to me about, so I'm gonna make the point again. And I also made it on, on Malinu's last uh, appearance I did about how conservatism versus liberalism, and I mean liberalism the way it's supposed to be made, not this socialist bullshit, they kind of require each other. And you have to respect conservatism and the basis and the rules of life and the ancient, I believe, God-given rules and rights. But some people, I know a lot of moral atheists. I don't think it's great multi-generationally, but you know, that's a whole different talk. But okay, so I, I, this is a great way to illustrate the point. Canon and D requires a, a steady and consistent scale to make the song, right? The whole song just goes like this. And that doesn't stop. And you could you could you could do it this way too. That's why it's called canon in D. It requires rules. So that's the bottom. And those other notes are the best way to describe it. You don't have to know, learn piano to know some of these concepts. If, if someone just takes the time to explain the concepts and not just the random note rules. Basically what I'm doing is uh, the first thing I'm playing is just a D, but I'm, I'm illuminating it with more notes that fit in that world. It would be the equivalent of this is just like the, the chalk or a pencil, just sketching something. And then that's just filling in the colors of the one note. And I'm not adding much to it. I'm just adding the world to it, right? But it's still the same, it's still the same sequence. So it's. Those notes are the ones that are the most important. That never changes. If you change it, it all goes to hell, and I'll show you what I mean. This is like, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, thou shalt not, you know, like rules. Uh, freedom of speech, freedom um, uh, of assembly, freedom of association, uh, second amount, freedom, right to bear arms, you know, just, just right down the list. R rules. And then, in that base, which you need and you have to respect, you can allow liberalism to improvise and learn from it and, and act out life, right? So then you get the right hand that just goes. And so it's just starting, just starting out. But the base doesn't change. Because if you change the base, it all goes to hell. But the base allows the liberal to But the whole time, you're always following the rules. See? You gotta play the F sharp or it's this. You see how that sounds insane? That's, that's progressivism. That's postmodernism. That's, uh, you know, life is subjective. Nothing is real. Like, let's all get naked in a jacuzzi guy. You know, you have to, when you follow the rules set to you by the base, you can then be free. But you have to be free within those rules, but it's an unlimited amount of freedom, right? So. So this is how this song goes. But yeah, watch, I'll make up a, I'll make up a storyline that's never been told, ready? No one's 
ever played that before, potentially. I'm just making this up, but it's still set in this world. And then, you all, and then it's always good to go back to the original to, to, to show what, where you come from. change see what I did there that's almost like when you're on the edge of um, of chaos but you're not crossing it it's almost like the uh, that gray area that me and Jordan Peterson were talking about on that live stream we did together about the free speech for pedophiles where you just start getting into an area that you're not quite sure if something works or not. And you, I could illustrate that point with music the same way, it would be rhythm, right? So, so we've established the rules. So it's, from there I can go. Dun, 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 new, new melody, but what about rhythm? See what I'm saying? It's like right on the verge of something where it's like. It's like half, half note beats. And so it, that's how my brain works and how I can conceptualize stuff and why I can dive so deep into chaos and survive is because you always keep the base. It's like tree climbing. It's like my brother's an arborist and I do uh, grounds work for him, but I know quite a bit about being an arborist. And it's all about having being tied in to the tree. And, and before you go to a, an area of chaos, you have to feel secure with this hand when you explore with this hand. And it's in that area that you learn, you know? So you, you, just, you just keep that. And every song has a, similar, has a similar thing. It's just this song is so iconic and it's so basic. And so many songs come from it. Song. No, somewhere over the rainbow is the same song. So it's just it double it doubles each one, and then I'll get back to school. I promise. I just uh, I love music theory. So it's so it's right now it's what if you double the amount each note has? So that's a new thing. It's still the same rules, but you made it. You've extended it. So it's it. Do you know how to do that? I don't, so I don't know if you want to just fix it now you're time. Or no, just come on in. Where, where, where are we doing? Uh, I'll put maybe. Look for keyframe. Keyframe. Maybe video stream. Hmm. It's a keyframe. I don't know. It says you can Sorry, we can OBS. We'll just take a look. People are cool. Um, keyframe, keyframe. I have no idea. Hi, bud. It goes, it's like in and out. It's not like all the time it's freezing, but. It's all right. We'll just, people yeah. know if there's other places they can go. Yeah. We'll fix it in the downtime. Yeah. Hey, little man. Hey, little man. Hi. Are you good? Oh, uh, yeah, let me check the chat. Is, has it been happening the whole time, babe? Um, it's been like kind of poor stream health, but um, just recently started to lag. Huh.
Yo, what up? Um, hey guys, is it is it real bad? Uh, just reload, works fine. Oh, someone just said just reload. Yeah, where's the little one relaxing? We need to get Owen to view the YouTube chats. I will. I, I just have to focus. It, like, I, I have to, like, uh, this is the thing. I love answering stuff and talking to people. But um, lost about 100 people when it started lagging. That's all good. People come and go. What superpowers do you have to help stop the insanity? Get enough O2. Everything's fine. We're, yeah, everything's cool. I have to stay on a topic because that's what I, – I really like when I live stream when um, – when there's a theme to it and there's actual, I can actually give you guys some knowledge or something that I understand. I love uh, super chats and I love the interaction, but it has to be balanced with um, something else. Oh, you're viewing YouTube. Yeah, I'll, I'll try. I got a lot of places to, to view now. Someone said, uh, this song makes my ears come. That's hilarious, Penis Bear. Thank you for piano comedy discussion. I love the unbearables and I see you as a role model. Thanks, Mike. Benny, it's grandma. Don't forget to change your underpants today. Well, my grandma's uh, dead, so I, I, I know that's not grandma. So, hi, Bear Phone. How do I get in on that? Eh, Bear Phone's a little... Uh, yeah, you can get Bear Phone access. Awesome, you get live broadcast back. You're an inspiration. Outlaw Bear is with the unbearables. We won't let them beat us down. Oh, hell yeah. I am a best-selling music author who self-publishes. Send me a message if you need help. I do. Will you please email me right now at whydidntheylaugh at gmail.com and um, just title it help with publishing so I can find it. Welcome back. I, I bought your show a few weeks ago and played it for my folks. They grew up in a small town. The winter carnival bit had them in tears. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, How Dare Me is uh, available at hugepianist.com. I spent five bucks on a super chat two months ago and YouTube charged me that five plus an additional 400. Really? Ah, man, that's, I, I've, I've never heard of that, but you can obviously get that back. Um, are you sure that that wasn't something else you were up to? I'm, I, one thing I will say about Google is definitely a gulag, but uh, I think they're pretty straight shooters as far as uh, that goes. I'm so happy that you finally read John Taylor Gatto. He is revising Underground History of American Public Education, Volume 1. All right, yeah, let's talk about it. All right. So, so I'm, this guy is incredibly, incredibly uh, good at teaching. And he has an incredible life and he has those uh, credentials and, and credibility and experience where you kind of have to listen to him a little bit. Kind of like Thomas Sowell. It's just legendary. So he was talking about, oh, the last thing I was talking about before I got sidetracked was uh, <clears throat> you got to have kids and old people because without kids around you, you have no sense of the future. And without old people, you have no sense of the past. And the amount of information you get from children and from old people, you cannot find anywhere else ever. Like the way I can see the world now through my son is unbelievable. And the way I see the world through my mother and father um, is unbelievable. That's why I maintain such a close relationship with, with, with them as well. And I, I feel really bad for people that um, have either lost their parents or their parents are in a home or their parents aren't around because... Um, it helps ground you in the present because there's a lot of manipulative forces in the world trying to keep people confused and, and in, a, in a very vulnerable position. And the a vulnerable position to be in are people that don't have a sense of past and future. If you're always just in the present, you can be lied to all the time. Like look at what CNN did about Trump, where for a year and a half, it was nonstop Russia collusion, right? Then they got no evidence of that. They switched to Stormy Daniels. So they're like, okay, we have another country that's influencing our country and rigged the election and got a puppet elected. Okay, so they, they, they did a lot. They uh, um, dug and dug and dug and dug. They got a couple guys for like lying and they won't about nothing and no evidence of that whatsoever. So then they jumped to, oh, well, Donald Trump had sex with a woman a while ago and gave her money. And they at no point are addressing the fact that they just wasted everyone's time for a year and a half about something that was not true. And the way they can do that is because our general population does not care about past or future. They are in a constant state of prey animal type vulnerability. And you can also see that with uh, global warming. A lot of these 
subjects right now I'm saying, and people are just going, like, there's people out there right now just going, oh, he's one of those. Rewatch An Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore. None of his predictions came true to a degree where it's, it's embarrassing isn't even the word. It's, it's, it's straight up fraud. Like by this time he predicted that New York City would all be underwater. Everyone's dying. None of it happened. Oprah Winfrey said that one in five heterosexuals in America would have AIDS by 1990 something. It doesn't happen. And this is the point I'm trying to make. People don't care. And it's not because um, they just don't care. It's because they're trained to only be in this one moment. It's the same quality in people that makes them fat. Where you just think, eat now. You don't think like, oh, if I eat this, the future I'll be fat. I know this because of the past I've been fat. And I know that if I go past this hunger right now, this craving for something I know isn't good for me, it'll go away very soon. No, you keep someone in this moment of frenzy and you can just sell them. You, it, but it's not even about money, it's about control. So the public school system isn't about teaching. And all right, like in a, not, when, when, when uh, uh, compulsory schools were first introduced to Massachusetts in the eight, uh, 19th century, Massachusetts had a 98% literacy rate. Since then, it's never been above nine, 91% up until the 1990s when this book was originally written. Slaves, slaves would have higher literacy rates at times in American history than the current population of Detroit. Slaves. Like when, when Thomas Paine or some of these people would publish books, just a giant amount of the population would buy them and read them. Now it's like, that's why publishing has become so um, aggressive and niche and power focused and not about truth because like the population isn't very literate and they don't like to handle um, hard truths or, or self-debate, you know? Um, because the thing about children is, is children need coherence and systems and um, a blueprint. You know, that's what I try to do with this show. Because I've thought a lot about that. I don't want to just be chaos. I know that sometimes I can plunge into chaos and it makes some people uncomfortable. So I like to keep a, a general thought throughout all of these streams I do. And I'm a 37, about to be 38 year old man who's had a very rich life. Very uh, full of highs and lows and... Um, and I've ended up pretty good. You know, I have a very wonderful and stable family. My career is what I always dreamt it would be. And um, I have a strong desire to, to pass it on in, in this culture that um, seems to not give a shit about children. And I want to pass the blueprint. You know, that, that, that was a brilliant album title by Jay-Z. I disagree with his blueprint, but it's basically like this is how you can get out of it. And so um, kids need that. Kids need a way of processing information. And the state and uh, a lot of these elite assholes are trying to give out false blueprints so that you process information only that will allow them to continue to keep all the power and to keep you down. And when I say power, just, just don't uh, confuse that with wealth or... Um, Freedom to like hurt people and stuff like that. That's not what I mean. That's a very disturbing uh, changing of the word power. That's more force. When I say power, I mean ability to be what you are. And that's very important for life. It's, um, and that's what this Gatto dude did is he would uh, take students that seemed like they weren't listening or they were frustrated or they were acting out and he would connect with them. Like, what are you interested in? And some of them would just be like, I really like to draw. I like to draw cartoons. And he's like, then you get into cartoons. And he would encourage them to do what they wanted. So the, their, their grades and all the other subjects would all go up because they started viewing school as a place to learn. Like I spend, no joke, at least eight hours a day learning right now through podcasts, through books, through audiobooks, through uh, just self-thought. And um, because I enjoy it, because it's what I like. I like learning about socialism, authoritarian takeovers, and how to combat it. I like learning about how to structure jokes and music and all this stuff. These are things that fascinate me. If I had to go into a room every day and learn how to spell, 
I would hate it. I would I would probably start doing opioids. You see how this, these things happen? It's like that's what fuels addiction. That's what fuels uh, violence. Because I have no interest in spelling. I have. I think it's silly and stupid. I think that um, that associating intelligence with spelling or meaning. If, it's like if you know what I'm trying to say, why does it matter? And now there's all these uh, algorithms and tools that will help fix all your words. So that now is done. Like I don't have any interest in knowing how the like the carburetor in my car works because I have a guy for that. And it doesn't really affect me. I can I can put those thoughts out so I can focus more on what I care about. And that's how capitalism works. That's how free market works. It allows you more freedom when you can... Um, hey, love, is he okay? Okay. When you can say like, okay, I can hire a guy to do either what I'm not good at or what I don't have time for. You sure, love? All right. That way you can stay focused and you can do your thing. You know, I like yard work. I like being an arborist. I like doing manual labor. It helps me think. It helps me um, uh, keep depression away. So, but there's a lot of things that I don't enjoy. I don't enjoy technology at all. I don't enjoy right now just the fact that my wife and kid are just hanging by my door crying. I don't know. Cause I, I get this instinct, like, is he, I know he's fine. I can tell his cries, they're, they're different cries. And that one I think is more about like, um, like this morning, it was pretty hilarious. Um, his, his water cup was dirty. It was in the uh, washing machine. So we put his milk in his, we put his water in his milk cup and he like spiraled. He was like, what is this? I, I feel bad sometimes laughing when he's crying, but uh, it's sometimes it's so funny because it's so honest. And so uh, I would never even think about that. Like imagine thinking that that cup was just always milk or always water. And that when it something happened to it, it's just it's just like so traumatic. But it was really funny. He's like, this is the water cup. There's milk in it because he loves water and milk. He's not attached to any like blanket or animal really, but he loves his milk and water. He always carries water and milk everywhere he goes. He's like, milk, water. He's like, yeah. Like when he's about to go to sleep, he's like, milk, water. And you're like, here you go. He's like, yes. He's like, this is when I'm thirsty. This is when I want to party. All right. So what am I talking about? Oh, so school tries to train kids to uh, to seek to seek approval from idiots, you know, because a lot of these teachers aren't experts, and we all know that a lot of them are, are complete dipshits. But we have to seek their approval, so that means that we lose our instinct of determining who the alphas are and who the experts are, which I did not lose, fortunately, because I have no problem following orders or following um, the lead from someone that I can tell is great. And uh, like no problem at all. That's why I'm a, I can I can be a good team player because it's not about compliance. It's about order and it's about hierarchy. But it has to make sense. It has to be like, oh well, this guy is great at this, or this woman is great at this. So I'm going to allow her more mental clarity or him more mental clarity by just doing my job well. And um, but it's not gonna I'm not gonna give that to someone who's a, a dipshit. And that happens a lot because of, of school. So, um, don't trust self. Yeah. Cause it makes kids start not trusting themselves or their own parents. Cause they're with, at this point, they're now with, um, public schools more than they're with their own parents. And a lot of parents, they both work because that was this genius move by some evil dipshit that just wanted to, um, uh, eliminate as much power from the workers as, as they could, because it makes it so, so labor is half as expensive and you can now have other people, you can now have the state raise the kids. So the, the next generation is less full of free thought. And a lot of these shootings and a lot of these, um, inexplicable mass murderers come from families with either no dad, no biological dad, or just broken homes. And we saw that a lot in the 1800s. They would, um, they would take the children from these, uh, families that couldn't afford children. And they would put them on a train. I read a book about this. 
It's about a train, something with a train. And um, they would just go out west and become farmers. And four of the eight, I think four of the worst serial killers in America were one of these kids. Because growing up with your family allows you to mirror uh, compassion and emotion and thought and stuff. And it just, it, it socializes you. That's why I'm taking uh, Walter, or I mean George, to, uh, to uh, dog training today. It's not really about the training. He's a good boy. He knows he's a good boy. Where is he? Is he even here? It's about him being around other giant dogs and just playing and having a, having a good time. All right, I'll read a little more. I'll talk a little more of this and then I'll get back to the Super Chats and um, maybe a little more piano. So this dude, Gatto, I'm, I'm now listening to, um, he has a five-hour talk on YouTube about the history of American education that's just, I literally lost sleep over it last night. I was listening to it till like two in the morning. The concept that collectivism is to sacrifice yourself to the state. And if you think about what leftists do, is they, they make it so the individual is the enemy. And so collectivism, we're saying LGBT, how the hell does, do those people all have something in common and they lose their own um, autonomy? That's why Dave Rubin broke away from the left is because he was sick of being seen as uh, gay Jew Dave and not just Dave. And uh, so when you become a collective, you now are already basically, you're already complying to your own death for, for the sake of, of the collective, which is the state, which is the, of people with power. You know, let's get, let's dive into this. So in the 1800s, well, going all the way back to Plato, but there's always been these um, philosophers that say that basically 95, there's a quote, where is it? Who said this? I didn't write it down. Was it Spinoza? That 95% that of the human race is a menace. And um, like Planned Parenthood comes from this. Welfare state comes from this. Uh, a lot of it started with Darwin. Darwin has some real issues. Darwin comes from one of the richest families alive in Europe at the time. And he was um, trained as an Anglican minister. Very, very, very rich, right? The, the Descent of Man, or the fall, it's called The Descent of Man, I believe. In that book, by the way, vicious racist. And the, the lowest race he felt there was in the world were the Irish. So all you blacks out there can relax. Uh, Darwin, a lot of people at the time felt that the Irish were the lowest human alive, that they were just unsavable. And, um, and the Anglicans and the Calvinists and, and some of these um, thinkers believe that, um, that they defined all living things into infinite amount of categories. Sounds very similar to SJW mentality, where you over categorize everything and that it's almost like a caste system, like a British caste system. And um, if you look at the Anglican laws of obedience, they're very, very similar to what Darwin came up with with evolution. Now, do I believe evolution exists? Yes, of course. The way Darwin out, outlines it was way more about politics and power than it was about uh, natural selection. Because that teamed up with the Calvinists who believed in uh, self-determination or um, they were anti-free will guys, which is odd because they're Christian. I don't really understand how that works, but that you were born a sinner or a non-sinner. Uh, it's called justified sinning. So you can invent an excuse for anything because if you're a sinner, you just are a sinner. If you're a non-sinner, you're a non-sinner despite what your actions are and that God figures all that out before your birth. That's absolute bullshit. That sounds like real commie bullshit. Uh, I believe completely in uh, free will because if you take away someone's free will, you take away their, their, their power, their ability to be who they are, right? So you have Darwin, this super, super rich dude who's putting the, this, this thought into uh, evolution. So now, so now you have the makings of hell, basically. You have thinkers like um, uh, Fit, what's his name? Fit, Fit, Ficta? Calvin, Plato, Spinoza, a lot of these people that believe that um, social engineering was necessary and that the vast majority of the population needed to be subservient. And, um, and they were really effective at it. So, like Carnegie was an uh, atheist, bazillionaire, and he donated an organ to 
like a lot of major churches. Now, this brings me back to that original book I told you about, about where is it? Influence, right? The reason I brought up the point earlier about, uh, about the, the reciprocity is it's used to manipulate people. Like learn about these things, not to learn how to manipulate people, but to not have it happen to you. And so what happens a lot of times is when you take money, like when Carnegie would give all these churches the organ, he then had um, influence over the churches because who's not going to take free money, even if it's from this crazy Scottish atheist who's, who's trying to uh, socially engineer. And he did the same thing with uh, libraries. So did Rockefeller. So did, um, you know, the Vanderbelts who are directly related to, to, uh, Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper is a Vanderbilt. Um, I think, oh, oh, uh, Gatto made this hilarious point. He was like, yeah, Bush and Kerry are, are both running for president. People were talking about how they're C students and making fun of that. He's like, they were in the same fraternity. He's like, I wouldn't even know how to do the statistics on that or the probability of that. They were given two options for president. And they went to the same college and they were members of the same fraternity. He's like, they're, this is not a Republic. This is like, this is a joke. And uh, it's true. And I think a lot of these people are given knowledge about human behavior and about how to handle yourself that are for the elite class to keep down people. Because it's not about stuff. It's not about money. It's not about um, that's a way to keep people down is make people want to get high tops or, um, a nicer car or a bullshit. No, it's about people being able to be what they want to be. It's about personal freedom. And that is what's at stake right now in America. And that's why public schools are so, and bear in mind, I have a lot of family members that are public school teachers and I love a lot of public school teachers. And, um, a lot of them try real hard to be real good and, and they touch a lot of kids in a lot of great ways but it's the institution itself is a sociopathic organism. And that's just true. And this is the history of it. And I highly recommend you dive into this because it's, it's, it's all right there. So anyway, Rockefeller and Carnegie set up, set up the teacher's pensions, right? This is, um, this is how influence works. It's, it's uh, with a uh, leverage where once you get people to need your drip of money, you now have control over them. And that's one of the reasons I don't take advertising money. It, it's as small as it sounds. I only want money from the people that like my comedy or my commentary because I don't want to ever have leverage on me about what I'm saying. And I've thought a lot about this because it's real easy to take and I've taken it in the past and it leads to um, spiritual, spiritual, emotional and intellectual rot because it's almost like putting your thoughts in a, in a cast like, like, a, like a broken arm where it becomes like itchy and weak. That's what happens to your mind if you start being forced to only think one way because you're getting money from a group of people, right? So media is controlled with advertising. And this is probably going to be a bit of a, <clears throat> a, bit of a, a conundrum for a lot of uh, the Jew haters out there because it's easy to hate the media because there's a lot of uh, Jews are in control of media, but... What's in control of media is advertising of giant companies run by a lot of these other guys. You see how it all works? It's not about Jews or it's about, it's about, there's, there's like literally a system in place to keep people in control. That's why I've never got on board any of this Jew shit where it's like, oh, the Jews, the Jews. It's like, no, they're one part. What about the Calvinists? What about the, you know, the Unitarians? What about the atheists? What about the, this weird sect of agnostic billionaires, you know? <clears throat> you can't categorize people and then judge the whole people based on it. It's what the left does. It's what certain evil tendencies of these neocons do. Um, and I'm only using those groups because of philosophical choices of the individual. It's not about their demographic, right? So um, you can't judge, you can't blame it all on one group because it's all working in sync. So the media needs to uh, appeal to the advertisers. And the advertisers need to appeal to the owners of the companies. And that's why I have no problem with the wealthy. I know a lot of super rich people that are super, super awesome, right? But I think that there is a level that shit starts getting weird. You know, like I think that there's, I know a lot of people that run companies of like 300 people, 500 people. They're worth tens of millions, maybe low hundreds. 
Um, all about market economics, America just crushing, great family people. You know, money's a burden. It can magnify your your demons as well as your angels. It's just an exclamation point. It's it's uh, it's um, steroids for the soul, but it isn't evil. The love of money is evil. Money is not evil, right? But there's a class of billionaires in America that have become very, very creepy. And if you trace the money, it, it's always with them. I don't think the state should redistribute it. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that there's anything wrong with passing on billions to your kids. But when, when they put together a system in place to make sure that, that no one goes against them, it's pretty evil, especially when they start with children. And uh, that tweet that's the thumbnail of this uh, video is the one that, that got 40,000 retweets before I was banned from Twitter for an innocuous tweet where I had all the picture, uh, I had all the, um, let's see if I can add it just so you guys see it. And I don't even know if there's buffering issues or anything happening. I really want to get this point across. I can't wait to read more of the stuff that you guys are writing me, but this is important for me that I stay focused. All right, where is this thing? Is it under bear art? Oh, images. This. No, that's not it. I'll find it. I'll find it. Uh, is it an Instagram? I tried to categorize all my stuff. I do fight against my disorder. Like, I am not the most ordered person. I get it. I try to fight it. One second. Oh, you want to see it crazy? Oh, that's matter it's under bear art why would i put it under bear art what kind of asshole puts it under bear art ah, i can't find it huh. i think i put it under bear art like a real asshole there's a lot in bear art that's the thing if you're going to categorize all your stuff you got to do it like really well or else it, it becomes fairly meaningless because then you're like Oh, this is all bear art, except for that one not bear art. And then you forget which one that is. And then you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Uh, but now I'm a little obsessed with it. Uh, well, I think a lot of you guys know the, the fucking thing. Anyway, because it shows the, it shows the, um, the master plan of it all. That they even got comedians. They got all late night people. I, I just said, all these men, and it was all of them, in one picture holding up a glass, all dressed the same. All the late night comedians. I said, they all endorse the same candidate, have the same opinion about everything. Ladies and gentlemen, comedy. And it was so obvious once you show it to people that, that there's no way. Comedians are the thought pirates of the world. Like, there's, like we'll disagree with stuff we agree, we believe just to fucking shake it up a little. That's the comedian's nature. Comedian's nature is to push boundaries. So the fact that they all agreed with Hillary Clinton, like a, a for sure murderer, like, like apocalyptic level liar, they're all pro-choice. They're, you know, with the, the only exception is uh, Bill Maher will criticize Islam, but other than that, he's on board all the rest of them. And uh, because Bill Maher tried to step outside the thought, police bubble like a while ago and his career got tanked. I think he said that the, the nine 11 pilot, the nine 11 terrorists it, we, did were, um, did show courage and they did. And people freaked out and they took his, uh, they took his job and they freaked out because he was going against narrative. If he had said they're good guys, I get that. But like they, I mean, they, they flew planes into a fucking building. They were evil personified and I'm glad that they're all dead, but that's a valid point. But it just that little step outside the box, they just hammered at him. You know, the same with um, when he when he uh, his opinions on Islam. But other than that, he's lockstep with all of them. And so, when you show that there really are forces at work that just try to keep everyone dependent, okay, th things get real crazy here. All right. Um, invent any excuse for anything about, okay. Beatrice Webb was the architect of the welfare state. And she is the niece of Herbert Spencer, who is the most profound racist who's ever lived, who also happens to be brilliant. 
So he's real evil because he wanted to kill all the Irish, all the blacks. You know, he invented the term um, survival of the fittest. He was a cultural Marx or a cultural Darwinist, which is racial, you know. And so he wanted to just kill all of them. He wanted he had a famous quote that was used in the, the Heart of Darkness. What is it? Let's uh, execute all these brutes. Oh, he said, let's exterminate the brutes. That, that was his whole thing. And he's, and he's not really painted in a bad light on Wikipedia. I'm painted in a much worse light than the guy who thought that we should exterminate all the Irish. And let's just stick with the Irish so that we don't go down a weird rabbit hole of uh, race and stuff. Because it's, it's pretty funny. Because we're all part Irish in America, pretty much. Some, somebody, some sneaky Irishman jumped a fence in all our families. So it's, he, he wanted to exterminate all the Irish. All right. So... His niece, Herbert Spencer, the founder of Fabian Socialism and the Bank of London, also believed that in, in racial uh, supremacy and whatnot, but she wanted to do it with kindness. She said, uh, kill them with kindness. There's two different ways, and they debated this. Are you just going to kill them all, or are you going to start the welfare state? Because the welfare state, as Kanye West has recently been pointing out to his own detriment, it keeps people in a state of dependency, just like the public school system is designed to do, where it keeps people dependent and isolated and frozen. And so, um, and then of course you have Planned Parenthood emerges and Planned Parenthood's main objective is, and you can see it by the numbers, this is not conspiracy theory, the vast, vast, vast majority of abortions are black babies. So, and it, one of Darwin's other cousins said, you can't give uh, food to the poor because they'll, they'll grow like cockroaches. These are quotes. So they, uh, they start exterminating black babies with Planned Parenthood. It's eugenics. These people started the eugenics program. That's why I did that joke about um, moron and idiot versus retarded. Moron and idiot were in, uh, mental classifications of people that were castrated by these people. They weren't allowed to have children or they were just killed. Retarded was the politically correct term used to try and disguise our horrific past started by, the, by these people. Beatrice Webb, the architect of the welfare state, whose main objective, along with her uncle Herbert Spencer, was to um, exterminate the brutes. But she did it emotionally and spiritually and financially, whereas he just wanted to kill them. But they all knew that that was a uh, real bad PR. And uh, I, I just want to talk about that. All right, so now I'll read some more Super Chats and stuff. I, ho I hope you guys are finding this interesting. I find this wicked interesting. I like your comedy and your commentary, so here's some cash. Also, I'm in the registry, but I haven't been officially verified as Martial Arts Bear. Welcome, Martial Arts Bear. Welcome back, Big Bear Penis. Thank you. You ought to read The Creature from Jekyll Island. I, I will. I'm, I'm like balls deep right now in, in some reading. And I'm also writing this book. I mean, the book was done, but now, I mean, the book's called The Good Fight. Got to include my most recent ones. With how tight my schedule is, I'm glad I caught you live. I'm listening while working the Sam's Meat Department. Can I be uh, verified as Ario Bear? Welcome, Ario Bear. I sent you my natural vision improvement files. Thank you. Is there anything positive to say about collectivism, or would you consider it an ultimate kind of evil? I don't know much about it. It's ultimate evil. Because I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with altruism. There's nothing wrong with compassion. And the most compassionate, the most altruistic people I know, by far, without question, are the ones who believe in individual freedom and free will. If you give someone free will, they're so much more likely to help people in need than the collective, because the collective removes personal accountability. That's the whole point of it. There's this book I read in college called Hitler's Henchman. Hitler, of course, a socialist, a collectivist. <clears throat> Hitler um, got a lot of people to do a lot of really heinous shit. And the, the whole book was how it went down. You know, there's another book that someone was talking about, like um, that, that illustrates how you make an Auschwitz commandant or whatever. It's slow. It takes a while, but it's about, uh, de it's, it's about breaking down the individuality of the killer, not just the, the, the victim. The murderers and the victims are both victims. Because when you remove the uh, accountability of somebody, 
One of the worst places to get mugged is in New York City. Like Kitty Genovese or whatever her name was. Like 30 people watched her just get stabbed to death. But if you're like on a country road and there's one dude driving by, he'll probably pick you up because it's him or nobody. Accountability. When you're in a mass collective of people, that's when like gang rape happens in wars or, um, you know, witch hunts, mob hunts. And you see it online all the time. These people are, are shame mobbing everybody and they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. When you lose the individual, you lose all humanity. And the institution is always designed to be sociopathic. Not the church, not a church, not a religious leader. I'm not against that at all. But once it gets too big and it gets so um, corrupted, it gets so about um, the institution survival and not the people's survival, it always goes south. Oh, my hub and I have five kids. The school thing is hard. Had them in Christian school till current year, till we couldn't swing it. Youngest four now in public. My SJW fears have been realized. Uh, glad we had them in my 30s and uh, grounded. Yeah, the more, I mean, public school is getting absurd. It's getting to the point where they're teaching LGBT stuff to like kindergartners and shit. It's nuts. Why do people judge vaping? Forgive them for quitting smoking. Anyway, glad to see you back. You seem much more collected and clear. Yeah, I, thank you. No one's against vaping. We're just, on. oh, you mean when we made fun of it on Crowder? It's because someone's vape pen blew up. It was hilarious. I think people are more against the vapors than the vaping because the vapors are always like, yo, bro, you vape? You vape? Hey, man, my name's Justin. I vape. Just a little gay. Amazing use of chord theory. Oh, thanks. All right. Um, I'm going to check my other ones. Welcome back. All right, sick. I don't know if these super chats are working. The super chats are less efficient sometimes than the PayPal ones. Hey, you can stream on YouTube again. Met you at your show in Minneapolis. You told me I was very warm. I don't have a bear name yet. Be warm, bear. Like physically warm? Were we like embracing? UNN News Story. Hashtag Me Too protesters mistake Chicago Bears fans for unbearables and attack them with pink hats. Also, can I be hardware bear? Thanks, man. Welcome, hardware bear. And that's funny. But, oh, and for all the, all the YouTube bears that have been out of the loop for a while, we have started a news network. No big deal. It's called uh, unbearablenewsnetwork.com. And we're starting videos for it very soon, but just go to it. We have, you guys can submit columns and articles and videos. It's awesome. And it's run by Base Texan and Nimmer and, all, and Coddington and Dolev and all those um, awesome bears because I frankly don't have the time right now. And it's something that you guys can shine with because so many of you guys are so funny and it's such like an obvious category that we can stick to and just run with where it's just, uh, it's kind of like the onion or the daily show or SNL weekend update for, um, non leftists. The Onion's still hilarious. I don't know how they pull it off, but SNL and daily show have just gotten real bad. Uh, so we're, we're doing our own version and, and the video part is coming soon. And Jengus bear is uh, doing all our web work. Now it's things have really been going well, oddly since the banning. But uh, I'm really glad to be back with all of you people. But I'm still going to stream it at the new places because I respect that they didn't turn on me. Um, all right, let me read some of these PayPal's. What was the video you were watching till 2 in the morning about schools? Oh, it's called, um, I'll tell you right now. This guy is such a legend. I, I love when I get really excited about a new dude. Um, it's called underground history lesson with John Taylor Gatto five hour interview. It's, it's, he gives so much info and this is just the beginning guys. Cause I never got into that Illuminati bullshit or, um, any of the, um, what's that Jewish family, the, uh, Rothsteins or Rothschilds or any of that shit, because, uh, you need a lot of evidence to make claims like that. But this dude isn't even going down those specific roads. He's just giving like real information about how people are controlled through schools. And uh, it makes a lot of sense. It, it's the first time in my life I ever really thought that there was a controlling elite that, that has a big plan for keeping people down. And um, keeping people down does not mean keeping people poor. It means keeping people without free will. And I think the bears are a group of people that value free will. That's one of our main things that, that keep us all 
in a group. And it's not a collective because no one loses their will. You gain, you gain with the unbearables because it's like, that's what this app will also help for. You guys can, can share skills and hire each other and riff and chat and become friends all over the world. And it's fucking beautiful because one of our unifying things is just free will, that it's about the freedom to say no. The real N word is no. And, the, and, and a lot of you guys in a lot of different ways see through the bullshit, through the social engineering, through the, um, the lies, you know, and your perspectives are all so valuable and so cool. And it's all about just, just maintaining that. And, and that's why it's really an honor to be part of this because I'm like, even without me, you guys still do the bear stuff. And that's always been so beautiful for me because <clears throat> I'm more of a, a tent post. I'm more of like a, a meeting place, which is kind of funny. Cause I'm so tall that when, um, I'd go to concerts with my friends. They'd always say, let's all meet at Owen because I'd, I'd be so high up with my height that people would just meet there. And that's kind of how I feel about these live streams where it's less about me and more about I'm like a good source to, to just start a community. And um, yeah, like Twitter, people are still bearing out of control on there. And I'm, I've been banned for a while now. And that's awesome. That means we're really doing something beautiful. Oh, sweet. Someone just said something that I got wrong. I love that. By the way, if you ever hear me say something wrong or say something that you disagree with, please tell me. I'm the opposite of the guy that doesn't want to hear criticism or new knowledge. I grow from it. All right. Someone just wrote this. Hey, Owen, huge fan, but I think you have Kelvin wrong. All Christians believe in the free will required for moral responsibility, but Calvinists believe that faith in Christ is a gift from God. All right. I'll look into it. But there was a few quotes directly from Calvin that... Are, are challenging to get around. But then again, maybe it's changed a lot over the years. You can't judge Catholicism by the current Pope. Um, the current Pope's a wicked weirdo. I don't know. I just know that um, the concept of a born sinner or born non-sinner is is pretty close to self or uh, to determinism. So <clears throat> please give me more information on that. Why don't they laugh at gmail.com if you want to title it Calvinism. Because I don't know very much about Calvinism. I just know that that concept of, of determinism is, is horrifying. Oh, Captain America here. I vape, yo, but I don't broadcast it except to people who smoke cigs and only once. Never bring it up with just the person again. Also, the vape pens that blow up are made in China. Just saying. Yeah, I think vapors are kind of almost like vegans in that way. Where it's like, uh, where it's fine. You can be a vegan. Just don't like act like it makes you better than everybody. That's what's annoying about vegans. It's like, I'm a vegan. It's like, fuck you. You know, it's the same with vapes. It's like, if you just casually vape, no one's going to get mad at you. No one's going to be like, oh, how, look at this asshole. They're going to get mad at you when you're like, oh, you don't vape, bro? Oh, no way. I guess he doesn't vape. Hmm. What an asshole. All right. I'm going to check out the, um, the PayPal's right now. PayPal dot me slash feed the bear. I got to go in 10 minutes. Barefoot bear here. Take this, have a six pack on me. Today I was listening, watching episode 21 while you started reading chapter one of your book. Amazing writer and I will pay whatever the hell you charge for your book. Thank you, dude. Uh, what is this? It sucks that you lost so much, but one thing I've learned so far in my life and I'm only 30 is that the more shit we go through, the tougher and more well-rounded we become, if and only if we choose to learn and from it and push on. We all have your back, you and your family's back. Keep fighting. Uh, Justin Trudeau isn't our leader. Keep your chin up and don't forget at least that fag ass soy boy bitch Justin Trudeau isn't our leader. What a legend! Thanks, Barefoot Bear. Yeah, I. Uh, that's the whole reason that they want the people. Anybody pushing determinism wants you to not learn from your own mistakes. Determinism means whatever happens to you. You, you, is not is not your fault and whatever you get is not because you're you tried hard and that is how you keep someone in an infantile state permanently it's how you control people and that's why always be wary of determinists who say that you have no free will yes you the fuck do have free will if i was the determinist and i got banned from twitter and youtube and colleges and lost my agent and manager and 
all this shit for my opinions in a six month time, I could have easily been a broken man, but I wasn't. <clears throat> all right. Let's see where I'm at here. Nathan. Hey, Owen. Oh, I already read that one. Jace. Hey, Big Bear, let's try this again. Open some mail. You should have an envelope. Yeah, I will. From uh, Libertas in Utah. The extra is for you, brother. Much love, Stampy Bear and wife. All right, let me see here. I don't really have an order. Well, this is, uh, whoa. Utah. Well, let's just go through some of these. I'll open a couple. Hopefully, I'll get to yours, but I don't, I can't really. This is from Hawaii. This is from Stephanie in Hawaii. Let's take a look. And I got to go to the post office and get more. I might not have even gotten it yet. I, I, whoa, this is awesome. Dude, is this like something you can breastfeed with? That's pretty awesome. I, there's a card, so I think that I will find out soon. That, dude, there's open boobies. If that's a breastfeeding thing, that'll be hilarious. Hawaii. Island Heritage Art Collection. Uh, oh, I open it like this. Hola, Owen, Amy, and family. I'm a single lady without kids in my mid-30s. We're not all bad. I know. And I've been following you since late last year. One of the things I appreciate about you is the most is that the obvious love and respect you have for Amy and your family and vice versa. I usually listen to you after work while I sew. I've been making baby bibs for a few years for friends and recently started selling them on Etsy. I wanted and recently started selling, um, to give you a couple for your boys. Hope you can see them, but if not, feel free to give them to someone who can. Hopefully you can use them. Thank you for uh, loving your family and standing up for what you believe in. Stephanie. Oh, I'm going to plug your Etsy, by the way. Etsy.com slash shop slash born baby bibs. Yeah, check her out. See, that's who I like to be sponsored by because then you guys get, get to check out good people because there's no corruption in that. I'm trying to figure this out, though. What are these little holes for? Do you put your like arms through them? Oh, it's also camo. But I think that that could also work with like boobies. Like a, like a mom could like have her tits sticking out of them. Those are awesome. Thank you. All right. Let's do uh, Texas. Evan. Nice. From uh, Arlington. Sweet. Here we go. Come on. All right. Your sweet mom night. Enjoy Evan's book if you have already read it. This is um, the, the Kindergarten of Eden. How the modern liberal thinks and why he's convinced that ignorance is bliss. Boom. I will check this out. Thank you very much. Uh... Those are books. I'm trying to find your Utah one. Is this, uh, oh, one's from Hopper from the Ladder with Crowder shop. I'm opening one more. Whoever this is from. This is from Mary. Uh, I need a knife for this one. I'm going to get back to this one. Oh, more books. Who's this from? Dissolving Illusions, Diseases, Vaccines, and the Forgotten History. Suzanne Humphreys, MD. Boom. These are all things that are going to be good for my current um, obsessions. I will get to yours soon, Jay. Sorry about that. I have to uh, go to the mailbox, I think, and get, all, get more. Jared, and thanks to everyone who just sent me stuff. I got a bunch more. I messed up the last note. I was going to say that I wish that I could see you in Omaha, but my brother is getting married that day. I am the best man. Anyway, Omaha is getting a lot more soy these days. I've heard. Can I be verified as Flatman, Flatland Bear? Welcome, Flatland Bear. Freddie Bear, UNN Lunar Correspondent. I had always been planning 
to play the Lunar Correspondent as if it were real. So it's awesome that you had the same idea. Totally. I've been re-recording my first report every day just to practice and experiment. Having started acting in theater, it feels like cheating not to do everything in a single take. I feel it would be hilarious for my UNN character to have my name as his bear name and to verify me the actor as Looney Bear. If that's already taken, Luna Bear or Moon Bear. Be Luna Bear. It's awesome. I still haven't settled on a characterization personality for Freddy Bear, so any suggestions would be appreciated. That's your journey, my friend. I'm excited to see what you do with it. Uh, this is from Jared. I got to go in four minutes. I guess this first message didn't go through, so here I'll just add that here in Nebraska they grow a lot of soy, but it is used as livestock feed, although they do, do get soybeans out of it for things like mayo. Don't eat mayo on your sandwiches or in salads. Yeah, I hear that there's been a, le a soy leak in Nebraska because I've been getting messages from people saying that uh, that there's been a like a soy takeover. Because like I, my mom went to Creighton in Omaha, so it's like I've always had a deep affection for Nebraska. I really hope it stays like Middle America, awesome. How's it going, Big Bear? I've been listening since I heard you on What Say You with the Impractical Jokers years ago. I found you at a hard I found you at a hard time, and you and Amy gave me hope. Tell her I said happy Mother's Day. Been following this whole journey, but never wrote in. I live in Chattanooga and want to be verified as Nuga Bear. Idea for unbearable news. White hostess in San Francisco literally melts after man describes his friends by gender and race in order to find where they are seated. Hilarious! Yeah, I'm looking for my friends. It's a table of uh, black dudes. And it's only one table. Man, I should pitch that to Crowder. And it's like, how dare you say their race? It's like, it's the... which. It's the one thing that makes him look different in this room. I was talking to Gavin about that. That's how Tommy, uh, uh, Tommy, Tommy, uh, how, why am I blanking? Tommy Robinson is in England. Like those guys are so not racist that they don't even see it. It's like someone said I was racist, but like me best mate is this black guy named Bubbles. Hello, Bubbles. Hello, Tommy. You all right? I'm all right, Bubbles. Piece of shit. All right. All right, Tommy. Fuck you, Tommy. Fuck you, Bubbles. It's like they don't even have the fucking at all of the disease that we have here as far as like everyone's the same. No one looks different at all. Tell that to Bubbles. It's black as fuck. Um, well, thank you. That was hilarious what you wrote. Saw a great analogy the other day. The left is suffering from a peanut allergy. People got so worried about peanuts that they completely isolated their children from peanuts, which we are finding out has caused the current epidemic of allergies to peanuts. That's hilarious. The children have been so isolated from the disagreement and conflict from helicopter parents in their safe suburban homes that they have to demand that all opposing ideas are banned. From uh, And see, this is the point I'm just going to make right now, and then I'll get out of here. I'll just look and see if there's super chats on YouTube. But by the way, if you want to support the show long term, hugepianist.com slash subscribe. Also, if you want to see me live in Portland, Soyland, or Richland, Washington, or Bellevue, go to hugepianist.com. Um, yeah. But, the, like, the technology explosion has been so freeing for people that the elites have had to, like, become fucking so crazy with all this soy shit and all the helicopter parenting and the no gender and all this shit. Same thing happened after the printing press. When they started printing Bibles in the, in the language that the uh, mass amount of people could read, it literally freed everyone. And it caused all these like major conflicts with landowners and stuff because they were just like, wait a minute, Jesus was poor like me? Fuck you! And, um, and that's happening now with the internet is freed so many people that the backlash is the SJW shit because they need some way to keep people from being free. And America's golden age, I believe, was the 1800s because it was the explosion of invention. So many of the biggest companies right now were started then. So many of the biggest um, inventions. And I think the Silicon Valley explosion is the first one where like, they're really trying to control how, how many people are allowed to be free. Because as you can see with my, all my censorship shit, they're really cracking down on free thought. Because at this point, it's, it's blatantly obvious that I'm not a sexist or a racist. It's so obvious it's fucking laughable. So that so what's their excuse that I can't say these like truths? What am I now? I'm a xenophobe? Like what what made up word are they going to use now? 
And that's the thing is they can't really, because I now have like, like dudes who know how to get through like lawyer type dudes that know how to get through red tape and bureaucracy and shit. And I'm not going to just take this sitting down. I'm going to tell my story as it's all happening. And, but I'm fighting it with all the shit that I know works with appeals and legalities and all that shit. Fuck them. I'm not going to get, take this sitting down. Uh, I've got two YouTube chats, one for uh, funny shit posting, the other for commentary. I'm wondering if I should keep the channel separate. Also, any advice? Do whatever you want, because there's no winning against these fuckers. If you, if you, the, playing their game, the only way they really win is if you start censoring yourself and changing who you are by thinking what they will not like. I was talking to uh, people at CRTV about that yesterday. It's like when people are like, well, back in the day, people could say, I'm like, you can say that now. I, I, th that's how the control works. Because there's not a lot of these people, and they're really not that powerful, that set up all these agendas and all this bullshit. Because most people are so compliant that they just do what they're told. All it takes is a few people like Jordan Peterson to be like, uh, fuck this. You're not going to make me call you Zer. And that simple act of defiance, people, you know, mainstream media is now calling him a Nazi. And he, he's obviously to everyone who is raised without parents that hate them in a free society. He is not a Nazi. He's a wonderful man. And so it's really unraveling. And it's a wonderful time to be alive. And it's a great time to get on board with personal freedom because we are winning. It's tough for some people to see, but a lot of these compliant collectivist type mentalities are just driving themselves into the dirt and the future is not bright for them because the reward for it is not worth it. Even if you look at it financially, forget the ethics and the morals. Being a leftist comedian now, you won't rise. You know, you, you might be able to get a little bit, but there's, there's so many of them now. It's almost like the, the strongest rabbit. You know, it's, it's a fucking joke. Like, find your own path. If you like origami, become great at it. If you like farming, if you like growing a garden, become a fucking sick farmer. You know, if you like flying a kite, just staring at a kite, just fascinated by it, get into, air, um, you know, airplane engineering. Get, get, dive into Bernoulli's principle. Figure out why the fuck that happens. Like, that's what it is. We're not the same. We're not... We're all completely different and we all have different strengths and different weaknesses. We're all part of the 1%. It's just a different 1%. The Pareto distribution exists on so many levels. Like everybody listening to this right now is not going to be in the 1% of wealth, not the 1% of athletics, not the 1% of health or speed, or, but you're going to be in the 1% of something. And freedom comes from finding what your thing is that makes you great or, or the thing that gets you up in the morning with a bang. This shit gets me up every morning and makes me think and write and work. And at night, I lose sleep learning about this shit because I care about it. If you put me at Ikea working there, I would fucking not care at all. I would suck at my job. I'm good at this job because I'm, it, it's me. And so I really want you guys to uh, just to run with that. Because that makes our entire world better. Because a lot of like rape and murder and theft and indifference and all this shit comes from people living at, as what Thoreau called quiet desperation. Quiet desperation, knuckles white, just doing something they hate. You build resentment, you build rot, you know, mold forms in the fucking dark. And then we have to live with these people. And there's a lot of them. And that's why I, you can send your kid to, um, public school and they'll be fine. All it takes is a couple uh, great teachers to inspire the kid and a really stable, really loving home, li home life. But I mean, I, I, I don't think it's good. And I'm really getting excited about potentially um, homeschooling my kids. My brother's homeschooling his kids. All right. I think I got to all of them. If I didn't just email me, I, I really want to um, make sure I get to all these super chats. I was reading the YouTube ones. Can you learn Mom by Garth Brooks? Yes, I can. Um, all right. I love you guys, for real. Like, hang on, I'm just double checking that. If there's anybody gave me like real big ones, I don't want to fucking not see them because I just feel like such a dick later. Uh, uh, hey, oh, 
Colin, keep up the great content. Would you like to de- uh, discuss how to automate Congress on a podcast? Whoa. My work is on Dr. Robert Murphy's website. It's possible how I think people should know consulting by rpm.com. Yeah, man, email me. Why don't they laugh at gmail.com? Say uh, podcast guest. Because I'm, I'm going to start having more guests during the week. Uh, Monday, I'm having Dave Smith on, the uh, libertarian. He has a podcast. Um, part of the problem. He's one of my favorite people. He's an awesome dude and uh, really funny stand-up comedian. He has a hour special they produced himself called Libertas. He's on um, Legion of Skanks. Awesome dude. All right, I'd like to learn more about Calvinism, uh, vaping, and I hope you guys had fun. I really do. Do you guys have fun? I'm up in the normal chat. I'm so happy. Man, someone just said I'm so happy. That's awesome. Yes. How are the bears? Automated Congress sounds interesting. It does. Do Lev had fun? Fun, fun, fun. Can a mod get owned to check out Streamlabs for donating? That's a very large. Well, this PayPal shit works great. They it, they take a no cut either. They take like one percent. Um, I love hanging with you guys, and um, yeah, I gotta go uh, bring George to uh, doggy training, and this is the end. But it was a two-hour Saturday podcast. Frank, you made my day. Oh, thanks, buddy. It was a fun one, and there's no we don't have to get all conspiratorial and cray, and and cray cray. You know, it's all about living our lives, but I, I think it's fascinating to understand the rent seekers of, the, of our society and what public school really is. And I highly, highly recommend you read the, the books, Influence, Persuasion, and um, Dumbing Us Down about, about um, education, because I'm really going to get into, I'm not just going to think about why I hate the left. I, I always want to get into um, a new skill acquisition or just something positive to obsess about. And right now it's, well, it's always piano, it's always comedy, but now it's also education. I want to learn how to really give my children opportunities that I didn't have. Um, all right, much love. Stay gay. Just kidding. Uh, comment, share it. I don't have Twitter anymore, but yeah, hugepianist.com to check out my um, last two hour specials or live live shows and unbearablenewsnetwork.com. Feel free to submit any joke ideas. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. All my strikes are gone from YouTube, baby. Come on. They had to finally admit that the bear, they didn't admit they were wrong. Smart fuckers. But uh, I'm back.